We have it. Oh yes, I have one someplace. Oh, we have a beautiful Bible that we inherited from my grandmother. And then they go, they open the drawer there, and they open it's in a box. It's all wrapped up in nice paper, and they take it out. Have you ever read it? Is it part of your daily life? My parents came home one day from one of their retreats and one of the one of their recollections or something, and uh, somebody had told them it'd be a good thing to have an open Bible in the house. So my dad made a little stand, and on the living room table, the Bible was there open. One year at Christmas, he gave all of us a stand. He knows we have Bibles. <laughs> But, you know, I was going to my, my siblings' homes, and boy, they took them out. I hope they're reading them once in a while. <laughs> Sharing your faith experience when an opportunity comes up, when it is the right time. You don't have to have a Bible in your hand to do that. You have to have the Word of God in your heart, though, and be led by the Holy Spirit. We, missionary disciples of Jesus Christ, have nothing to impose, but we have someone extraordinary to recommend, to propose, Jesus. Do you ever share your spiritual journey with others? Share with someone on a personal basis how the gospel and your relationship with God is fulfilling for you? How it has helped you through your life? There are many, many opportunities that can come up, you know, where you can simply share. That's not moralizing. That's not obliging others to believe. It's sharing from your life. This is my experience. This is what God does in my life. The times we live in require that we Catholics learn to speak about our faith, not by preaching on street corners necessarily, or banging people on the head with Bible verses, but by a loving and caring presence when you share your life experience. The Lord has done so much for you. His love and mercy have raised you up so many times. A missionary disciple is able to share that experience and give witness to his faith. I don't know if you've noticed, I, I wear on my lapel here a fishing hook. It's a conversation piece. <laughs> There's not a day that goes by that someone does not, oh, what is that? An anchor? A, a, a fish hook? I says, it's a fish hook. Oh. You like fishing? I says, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Airports, uh, bus terminals, anywhere, anywhere I go. Social events. Wow. You're, you're a priest? Yes, I'm a priest. Um, Archbishop, oh, you mustn't have much time for fishing. No, it's my full time job. <laughs> <laughs> now, now they're really puzzled, you know? He says, You know, Jesus said to Peter, I'll make of you fish of men. My life is to invite people to come to God, to draw them to God. Now you've noticed this is not a net, fishing net. It's a, it's a hook. Because a net traps fish. Christians are not there to trap people. We're there to attract them. But they got a bite. And then they always, most of them will ask this question. Why, do you, have it, ever, do you have any bites sometimes? I said, oh, I got a big one on the hook now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it depends where I am and who, who's with me, you know, in the time I have. But it's open to real deep conversations. It opens up. And when they open the door a little bit, you put your foot in. <laughs> to share. Oh, God is all my life. Oh, there aren't many who do that now. Other than I mean, no, but you know, the Lord didn't start with millions of people. He started with a dozen few. And he, the dozen didn't make it. And yet, the gospel spread all over the world. And, and it's, it, 
fills my life and it makes sense and it's it's life giving and oh you've been a priest for a long time and it, it just opens up conversation piece. You gotta take those little moments. I can rarely sleep on a plane or on a train or on a bus. There's always somebody asking something. And if they ask, you answer. And be generous to share. It's not time to explain to them the mystery of the Holy Trinity. <laughs> or all you need to know about morality. That's not where you start. You start by sharing who God is for you and what He's done for you. You know, He's done that for me, but He can do that for you. You're created in His image and likeness. You can go on from there. You know, you're very well equipped to be a missionary here now. You have what it takes to make a difference in the world, in the world around you. And you can help bring a lot of people to Christ, to new life, to the church, to that faith community where we can grow, where they can grow, and not feel alone and in despair. You have what it takes. You just got to use that and decide you're going to be a missionary. <clears throat> we have received a mandate that is very clear. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, says Jesus. Almost his last words before his ascension. Go. That's a wonderful verb. Don't just sit there and wait for things to happen. Go. You, me? Yes. Us 12. Look at us. We're not strong in our faith. Just remember a few, a few weeks ago. When you were in that special and difficult moment in your passion, we fell asleep. We abandoned you. Yeah, but now you experience the resurrection. You can go. Go and preach and teach and baptize and witness. Go. It's time we get up and get moving, folks. All of us. And we need to do this with enthusiasm, with hope, with a sense of urgency. And most importantly, with unwavering faith in our Lord. It is true we have less priests than we had before. I ordained one priest last year for our diocese. Some years there are more, last year just one. Fifteen died. That's not quite enough to replace. This year I will not ordain any priest. Next year there will probably be four. Another 15 or at least will have died. Thank God the Lord did not entrust his mission only to the priests, but to the people of God, to the whole church. And we're learning it's a very, very difficult conversion. We're learning that this mission is for all of us <clears throat> together. We all have our place in our mission. We all have something to do in this mission. <clears throat> Pope Francis one day shared his dream You'll find it in the Joy of the Gospel, number 27. I dream of a missionary <coughs> option. That is a missionary impulse capable of transforming everything so that the church's customs, ways of doing things, times and schedules, language and structures can be suitably channeled for the evangelization of today's world. 
rather than for her self-preservation. Isn't that powerful? The renewal of structures demanded by pastoral conversion can only be understood in this light as part of an effort to make them more mission-oriented, to make ordinary pastoral workers a constant desire to go forth and in this way to elicit a positive response from all those whom Jesus summons to friendship with himself. In our Diocese of Quebec, our vision, our mission statement says to propose or to re help renew the personal and community encounter with Jesus Christ, to build communities of missionary disciples. That's where we're at. And allow me, in finishing, to add a few of my personal convictions to help you grow as missionary disciples in your everyday life. First thing I would say, give the maximum space and time to the Word of God in your life, especially the Gospel. Time to study, time to share with others, time to meditate, to pray with the Word of God. The Word of God is food for a disciple of Jesus. It forms us to become like the Master. I am so convinced of this that since I have been Archbishop of Quebec, seven years it's been this week, I have asked that all our meetings begin with the sharing of the Gospel. The Economic Committee, the Bishops Committee, the Archbishops, Pastoral Council, meetings with priests, deacons, groups, parishes, a 20-minute time to share, pray, and reflect on the Word of God. Because the Word of God brings us together and sends us out to love and serve our brothers and sisters. It felt rather unusual at the beginning. It was a little difficult for my, my co-workers to get used to this in the diocese and offices to start with. Everyone had a Bible in their, in, their, in, their, in their bookshelf, you know, and they used it to prepare talks and catechesis and all that, but we never prayed with the Bible. Uh, at Mass, of course, we have the liturgy of the Word, but outside of that, you know. Some said we were becoming Protestants, <laughs> walking around with our Bibles. No, we are taking seriously what it means to be a disciple, eager to learn from the Master, Jesus Christ, how to live our mission. We watch Him as He walks in this world, as He relates to people and situations. We learn from Him how to be witnesses of God's love for the world. 20 minutes. It's very different starting a meeting with a 20-minute prayer time instead of just a Hail Mary and our, our Father and Holy Spirit enlighten us, which is fine. Unless we have a big agenda. If we have a big agenda, it's 30 minutes. <laughs> it's not time wasted. It's a great investment. We're not the same after we share the Word of God together. This is not a Bible study, it's sharing. What's the good news in there for us today? How does the Lord speak to me and to us? We usually take the Gospel of the day. In weekly meetings, well, we use the Gospel for the next Sunday, usually. So you can imagine how many meetings a bishop has in a week, sometimes two or three a day. So I'm forever sharing the Word of God. What a great time. It's changed the pastoral teams and parishes. It's changed parish committees. 
We have hundreds and hundreds of groups, small groups now, all over the diocese, sharing in many different settings. Some go to a restaurant for breakfast and they ask for a table in one corner and they share there. Some do it in their condos in those big apartment buildings. <laughs> Some do it everywhere. My friend, what place does the Word of God have in your daily life? Do you spend quality time with the Word? I mean, outside of when you have to study it or have to prepare something with it? Just to learn and be. It's a dialogue with the Lord. It's the Word. He speaks and we respond. <clears throat> Secondly, as we saw earlier today, Renew on a daily basis your personal encounter with Jesus Christ. The Gospel, the Holy Eucharist, <clears throat> adoration, silent time to be with the Lord wherever you are. All of this is necessary to remain on fire with apostolic zeal. If not, there's a great risk that you could become just an official, like a salesperson with a pitch without conviction. That does not evangelize. The church does not need salespeople who go door to door convincing people that our merchandise is worthwhile. We have nothing to sell or trade. We have someone to present. And the best equipped people to do that are witnesses. Those who are with Jesus, live with Him and walk with Him on a daily basis. The time we spend in prayer with the Master is precious and extremely profitable. <coughs> Thirdly, you cannot become a missionary disciple alone. We do not send ourselves out as autonomous workers, lone rangers who do our thing alone. We are sent by the church by the Lord through the church, the church we belong to, our family in which we grow and celebrate and pray. That is very clear as we read the gospel. Jesus trained his apostles, his disciples to work together, to witness together, to go out at least two by two, to radiate the joy of the gospel together. A parish community, a youth group, a movement that lives the gospel together in unity and joy attracts people to join them. We work by attraction, not by advertisement. You're the best way to attract people, who you are. When we read the Acts of the Apostles, we see how the first Christians were very attractive by their love and fellowship and their communities grew and grow. Finally, I would add this. Be proud to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Live with joy your faith. Be proud of the Catholic faith you have received as a gift from God. Stand up for your faith with courage. Don't hesitate to express your beliefs. Don't let anyone disrespect your faith. That is not always easy to do, but necessary. It strengthens us to stand up for what we believe. It gives us courage and is a powerful witness to others. In these past weeks, we've been struggling quite a while. You've probably read about this. The Canadian government has decided that to employ students for the summer period, for the summer season, what we've been doing for years and years, we had to check a paragraph that says that we agree with the government's policies on the reproductive rights of women, abortion, all of that. We can't check that. And so we uh, we met, we met with our, our, our uh, members of parliament, the minister who's in Quebec, 